The next situation to look at is your damper in operative operations. Now the your damper is a system that's used to reduce or dampen the undesirable tendencies for the aircraft to roll and to yaw. It's quite important when you're flying at high altitudes at high speeds, especially for swept back wing aircraft like the 727. Now the 727 has two yaw dampers and what we're referring to here with your damper in operative is just one failing. The penalties for your damper in operative operations is found on page 5-3, but you'll find there's not really much written there. That's because there's not many penalties for flying with your damper in op. We've got specific cruise tables, but because we're already flying in the cruise, you're not going to find any penalties for climb or for descent, especially altitude capability. If you can achieve the level you're originally flying at, it's not like you're not going to be able to achieve a different level. We do have some altitude restrictions, however, with the your damper in op. That's what we're going to look at now. On page 5-24 and 5-25, you're going to find the your damper tables that you're going to use 99% of the time. The rule with your damper in operative operations is the maximum altitude you're allowed to fly is flight level 300. Now the strange thing is the 727 is not actually allowed to fly at flight level 300, but that's an RVSM level and the 727 is non-RVSM approved. That means effectively the maximum altitude you can fly with your damper in operative is either flight level 290 or 280, depending which direction you fly, because we still have to remain hemispherical. So when you're flying west, the maximum level is 280. When you're flying east, the maximum level is 290. And it's definitely worth highlighting those hemispherical levels in the tables like I have here. In regards to the mark number, this is similar to the depressurized operation, where we're told to fly at a specific indicated airspeed. You can see at flight level 290, they want us to fly at 280 knots indicated, and at flight level 280, they want us to fly at 290 knots indicated. Instead of getting the whiz wheel out in the exam and working it out, I'll tell you what the mark number is, and then you can use a calculator method to find the tabs. It's a much better way of doing it. Now there's a little trick you can do on these tables, and you can highlight the relevant mark numbers like I have here. So at flight level 290, we're going to be flying at mark 0.73. 280 are going to be flying at 0.74, and if you need it for flight level 270, it's 0.75, and for 260, it's 0.76. In the exam, you'll generally only need 290 or 280, but some practice exams ask you about flight level 260 or 270, so I've given you the mark numbers for that as well. Now, the yaw damper is one of the only times you can't assume an instantaneous descent. That means we have to plan the descent. The scenario would generally look like a flight at say 330, flight level 330, your damper fails and then you descend down to the relevant level. So whether you're flying east or flying west. That means we've got to plan an intermittent descent from whatever level we're at to whatever level we're going to now, whether it's 28 or 29. And in the next video, we're going to look at that together. The SAR for your damper and operative operations is 9.2. Now you might have thought it's a little bit more than that, but because there's no actual drag hanging off the plane, there's nothing wrong with the plane in terms of drag or performance penalties. We just happen to be flying a little bit lower, which would increase the fuel flow. We're also flying a lot slower, which is decreasing the fuel flow. That's why you'll find the SAR a little bit lower than the others. So in the next video, we're gonna look at a scenario where we're flying along, your damper fails, we descend down, and then continue flying with the your damper failed.